Welcome to episode 12 of the Soccer 60 podcast brought to you by Little League. Soccer 60 is your youth football podcast where we bring coaches and those in the industry to get you to know them more and to dissect more about the industry as a whole. Now, towards the end of the show, we'll be answering some of your questions. Uh, so don't forget to send them in our social media platforms at Little League Soccer MY on Facebook and Instagram. In this podcast, your usual suspects are myself, Henry Chu, Andy Johnston. And for today, we have special... It's double trouble, actually. Uh, we have two... Coaches, we have two guests today, which is Coach Rashidan Malik and also Coach Abdullah Husni, uh, respectively of the FCKL under eights, under nine EDPs, and also the under ten EDP A and B teams. All right, everyone, how's everyone doing? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. I'm good at the moment. I'm excited uh, for the Soccer Sixty podcast. Uh, right. Same here with me, excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm less excited because. Doing another Soccer 60 podcast means we are locked down again, another yeah. CMCO. Um, yeah. So we're back to that uh, kind of routine now, recording mm-hmm. from our rooms respectively and uh, waiting to get back out on that pitch. Fingers crossed hopefully, for everything, hopefully. honestly. Now, while we have the CMCO with us, obviously, that doesn't mean that Little League and FCKL are kind of off duty from anything. So Andy, why don't we do a little bit of housekeeping or what Little League is up to for the next two weeks or the next week or so? Yeah, so obviously um, we went through a, a period of a couple of months earlier on in the year where we couldn't do any out, outdoor sessions. We, we learned a lot from that process and uh, I think we fine-tuned um, what we've got available for, for this time round. Hopefully it is just for the next two weeks and, and doesn't go on any longer than that. Um, but we have our online classes going on on Saturday and Sunday morning. This time round they're completely free of charge, so absolutely no reason not to not to sign up for that. We're looking for... Uh, big numbers. Um, classes will run at 9 and 10 a.m. Um, Saturday and Sunday mornings for the various different age groups, under 6 all the way up to under 16. Um, you can sign up for that on our website, www.littleleague.my, and you'll see all the details there. Um, we also have some special activities for those of you that purchased your October training passes. Obviously, you've been disrupted for, for the second half of this month. So we've got some very, very special activities coming out, which will be in an email very shortly. Uh, Look out for some fantastic activity packs, especially for the younger kids. There's going to be lots of coloring competitions, word searches, quizzes, things like that. Uh, I know as a parent myself with with a young child, uh, any extra activity you can have along uh, at these times is very beneficial. So I hope that the parents out there enjoy getting that through and, and that will be through very soon. On the subject of parents, something we have never done before, but is coming very, very soon. We are going to be running our first ever parent classes. Um, so obviously this will be online via Zoom um, for the moment, but there will be classes available for all you parents to sign up, see what your kids are going through and uh, experience some workouts and technical drills with our coaches. Uh, I think it should be a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up at little li- littleleague.my forward slash parents. Uh, oh, once again, wow. littleleague.my forward slash parents for some fantastic fun-filled sessions. Uh, and you can really show your kids what you're supposed to be doing during this period. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be having over the next two weeks. Hopefully it is just the next two <coughs> weeks and we'll, we'll be back out on the field as normal in November. Um, but yeah, get involved for the moment. Everything completely free of charge. Well, fingers crossed for everything to be going back to normal. But again, what Andy said... Don't forget to sign up and also if you need more information, you can go to www.littleleague.my and don't forget to also rate and subscribe to us on Spotify, YouTube, um, Apple Podcasts, any podcasting platforms that we have our podcast available on. Okay, If you rate us 5 stars, thank you so much. If you don't, don't forget to send us a comment or uh, let me know because I know Andy's going to send it to me anyways. <laughs> um, now, we will move on to the part of the show where I enjoy a little bit more, which is Explain That Kid. Now, we have two guests today, so two kids. Uh, Abdul and Idan, what does your jersey mean to you guys today? So, let's go with Idan first. Okay, uh, <coughs> obviously, this is my uh, former club, which is SMB Melaka, uh, which is a uh, water company, uh, second team of the Melaka United team, uh, which is uh, this team uh, bring me a great memories, which is a uh, f- first my first experience sign for the pro clubs. So for me, it's a, a higher achievement for myself. All right, uh, in my football career. So I have a good experience uh, with the team, uh, and then 
uh, especially in their professional terms. And uh, Abdullah, is this your former club as well? <laughs> oh. No, this yeah. is uh, National Germany uh, kit. So basically, I'm not supporting Germany, but I'm supporting supporting Itali- uh, the Italian national team. Because I'm wearing this, because I still remember when Italy score in the semi-final against Germany, 2-1, that Fabio Grosso goal. So basically, I lost my Italy jersey that was signed by all the 2006 World Cup winner. So but I still remember this goal from Fabio Grosso and Alessandro Tapiero. 2-1, the, the year that, that Italy won the World Cup. Right, there's a, there's a story in there that might tell uh, the listeners a little bit more about you, Abdullah. Can you explain how you managed to lose an Italian shirt that was signed <laughs> by all of the World Cup winners? Uh, so basically, my house was robbed in 2007. Oh my. Yeah, so <laughs> that was the, the side one, because that one was signed all the side, all the player by, including Frankie, so all, including the staff that won the World Cup. Mm. So it was signed all by the jersey, but I lost it. It's, uh, ah. It was my birthday present from my brother. Ah uh, no, ah. Uh, it's that's that's terrible news. But See, uh, I, I, I have a sadder I, story than I was hoping for. <laughs> 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 um, so basically, uh, Abdullah today is wearing the German jersey out of spite <laughs> because. <he couldn't> <laughs> <laughs> But it's okay. So, it's okay. Wait, so, the, so you're telling me that the robbers broke into your house, stole the Italian jersey, but left the German jersey. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this is my brother-in-law give it to me. So, uh, well, that's a very good way to transition to the next one, I think. Uh, but um, let's move on then to the main topic, uh, which is going to be talking about. A little bit more on background of uh, Abdullah and Idan's pre-coaching or playing career. So, um, for you two, why don't you guys give yourself, give give us the listeners, um, a brief background of yourselves and how you got yourselves into football? Okay, start uh, with me. All right, I'm start playing football around seven years old, uh, which is my dad bring me to the park, just kicking the ball around. That's it, just kicking the ball around until I got ten years old. I represent for my primary school and then starting from there I have love uh, with the footballs and everything and then uh, years by years I start to represent for my secondary and then start to represent for my uh, state which is uh, Kuala Lumpur under 17 and then move on to the university days and then the last one is the which is uh, this is team uh, SMB Melaka so there's uh, a lot of experience which is start from the youngest until now a lot of thing i seen uh, especially in the experience terms uh, how professional uh, they are and then the the difference between the amateur and the professional now at the moment i play as a social league so in terms of training yes it's a big big difference all right and then the management is quite the same. And then uh, for me, I think, yeah, that's it. That's it. Now I'm into the football coaching career. So that's the parts way I'm going to go into and focus now uh, for now on. So Idan, obviously, as Henry mentioned earlier, you're um, currently the coach of our uh, under <coughs> team. Um, so you're, you're dealing with players that are seven and eight years old, which is around the age that, that you were when you first started. Um, yeah. So how do you, you find uh, the, the football provision for the kids right now versus when you were growing up at seven, eight years old? How does it differ? A very big difference. Now at the moment, we have a grassroots football, uh, which is uh, during my time, there's no grassroots. Right, so now uh, the nowadays kids have an opportunity to start them young, like uh, you did with the toddlers, three and four years old. So it's a very very good for them, and they have a very high chances for them uh, to go further in football career if they want. So interesting yes, yes. to note that Idan thinks it's a good idea to be teaching kids at three and four years old. So he's <coughs> up for coming to help me with that program. <laughs> Okay, we talk about that thing later on. <laughs> Let's move on to another side. <laughs> uh, Abdullah, what about you? Why don't you give us a brief background on how you got into football coaching? Um, so basically, 
I started to just like then I'm playing with my friends from seven and eight years old, and then started playing with my uh, high with my high school. I didn't start playing. I didn't represent any my primary school. I started uh, with my high school, and then going for my degrees in sports science, and also I'm because I love football. So I'm not good enough in football. I didn't represent any clubs or anything, but I'm not good enough in football. But that's a pathway for me to to take a job in football, and that's why I choose football coaching. And literally, have give me that opportunity to go on. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think no, this is no. a really interesting point to examine. Just just quickly, Henry. Sorry mm-hmm. about that. that. No worries. Obviously, Abdullah and and Ida, and you guys sit there now as colleagues working in a very similar field, but you both have a very different background to football growing up. Obviously, Idan, um, you know, it was it was a big part of you growing up, and you rep- represented um, you know high levels as you as you went up through the age groups. Abdullah, uh, not quite so much for you. Um, you know, it was more kind of an amateur kind of thing. So, Abdullah, like, what what do you think your experience taught you versus what Idan's taught him in, in terms of he was there representing his district, his state, and and you were just playing it more from a kind of fun point of view with your friends and stuff what, what sort of differences do you think you found from that um, for me the difference is, is just that it's keeping me interested in football it's just that it's giving me interest in football so that even though I don't have any chances in football but because I love football so it's giving me a way for that for me to go suddenly so it doesn't mean that if you if you don't have a chance in football to be a player, you can be something else. Maybe you can be a coach. Maybe you can be a referee. Even though you don't have the the skill to play as a player, you can be anything that you want in football. So interesting that Idan has volunteered himself, thinks it's a good idea to get involved with the under four session, and Abdullah has volunteered himself as a referee. Very interesting. <laughs> I think we I, I think we in little league will start diversifying. We'll have a referee coach soon, right? <laughs> you want to be like Nidal. Nidal, Nidal want to be a referee. <laughs> uh, we, uh, Idan, there mentioned Coach Nidal, which is someone that we also look forward to bringing on to the show in the in the coming episodes. Now, um, both of you guys have sports science backgrounds, right? Um, why, actually, like there is a plethora or there's a, a lot of uh, career opportunities with sports science to go into but why is it that you go you guys went into coaching with that degree and also use this opportunity as an internship to go to little league to do an internship uh, and then to go to coaching why why choose that pathway for you guys all right sports science in our university's days uh, we have a lot of branch under the sports science which is physio, management, facility, and coaches, mm. and coaching. So uh, from that, uh, we learn about coaching, how to coach uh, the team, how to coach the player. And plus, I'm playing football. So it uh, make it easy. The transition is smooth for me, uh, which is uh, what I learned uh, during my university days. Uh, I apply uh, during my internship. Mm. Uh, that's why. Uh, that's why uh, y- some of you guys need to understand because below the sports science we have a uh, a lot of career pathway, which is like I tell you just now, a uh, physio, nutritionist, and everything. This uh, coaching is one of it. Okay, yeah. uh, Abdullah, did you follow the same pathway as Idan did in terms of that? Yeah, it's it's just the same. But to be honest, in sports science in Malaysia, it's not that big enough. Right, I can come from my batch. Uh, in degree, I have hundred, hundred people, mm-hmm. and I can, I can, and I can tell you that, out of hundred, only ten that you you are uh, that using the pathway of sports science. Another ninety ninety is with banks. That doesn't mean anything in sports science. Sport. Not not related mm-hmm. in sports. Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't know whether we've spoken about this on the podcast before or not, Henry. But I also did sports science at university, and uh, from. My experience of what I did on my course, it's something I would never recommend anybody to ever do. <laughs> basically, what I learned from sports science at university was how to party. Um, and that was basically it. Yes, yes, um, 
<laughs> but in, in, in terms of like what um, the course actually gives you, it, it kind of introduces you, as Idan has just mentioned there, it introduces you to several different areas of sports science. But e each one of those, you could actually find very specific courses to go and do. So like if you wanted to, to be a coach, uh, you know, going to do sports science under the coaching division is not going to be as applicable as it is going out, getting a job or going straight onto your coaching licenses and learning like on the job at the same time. Uh, same sort of way if you want to go and become like a sports psychologist or a sports nutritionist or whatever you, there's specific courses to go and do those sorts of things so I think a, I think a lot of people fall into doing a sports science degree because they like sport and they don't know what they're going to go yeah. and do mm -hmm. at university yeah. it's a very generic kind of thing and I think that that's why as a as a university degree subject it's, been, it's become very popular and, um, and and quite successful because it captures a lot of people that don't really know what they want to do um, um, and so I think if you have like an idea that you want to be a coach, then you're better off going to try and get an internship directly with a with a coaching organization or a club, whatever it may be, and trying to do your badges through that through that pathway. If you're interested in one of those other areas of sports science, you should probably look to try and get on like a nutritionist course or a psychology course and then yeah. specialize in sports. I think it's far easier to do that and, and do the, the thing. So if anybody out there is listening and thinking about doing a sports science degree, don't. Do something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we move on to the part where we talk about the internship, right? We we go we, we touched a little <coughs> bit on that one. Um, for you two, um, what was it about working here in Little League Malaysia, NFC Kuala Lumpur, that made you guys decide? You know what? Um, not only am I gonna get my internship done here. How how did you find this place? <coughs> and also, how did you decide then? Yes this is where I'm going to be for the next maybe two to three years. Ah, because it's close to my house. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's true, it's true. Can I say, during uh, our old time, it's close to our... Uh, no, actually, uh, because uh, there's a one time I saw Azizi uh, because he's done internship uh, LLM uh, at Calafé, so I contact him. Uh, how was the experience over there and plus uh, literally it's about the football so I contact him and then he give his feedback and I write a letter to him and then how is it done and then plus it's the thing what I love to do which is football that's why it's related to what I want um, Abdullah uh, I'm, I'm sure that you also had the same notion or did you get someone to also refer you to Little League uh, or did you find it yourself? Um, to be honest, okay, so when I was internship here, I was thinking about what is my next job? Is it this one or another one? And then, or maybe I'm some, finding something else. But to be honest, because job is, to be honest, I love football, right? So when they gave me opportunity to work here, I, I said yes straight away. One thing is because it's near to my house, my parents' house in, in Slayang. Just like Idan, and then second one, <laughs> second one is because <clears throat> doing this it's not just about work; it's about passion. You you can you can do any any job. You can get any money from any job, but doing something that you're passionate with, that's a different thing. Hmm. I think okay, um, okay. I, I think uh, these guys are probably not being quite honest. I think that they probably. Um, <laughs> They probably sent out an application for an internship to many different places. Uh, <laughs> but, but look, in reality, right, there's not many companies in Malaysia that can pay for people to work in sports or even more specifically in football, right? There, mm. There's very few mm. opportunities around. So we, we tend to um, get a lot of applicants uh, with internships and we try to take on as many as we possibly can. Um, you know, for some people it's the right work environment, other people it's not. Some people shine and, and, and really manage to forge out a career for themselves and uh, and other people, you know, don't fit into the into the, the, the team and that's fine. But um, you know, it's it's really for these guys they they you know, they're intern or they're looking for internships, they're sending letters out to all over the place and, and realistically there's not that many people that can actually provide a, a career path and and i think that's why we end up with so many interns come through our doors and and also we end up employing quite a fair share of interns as well mm. Yeah. Mm. i think we have uh what uh four previously uh or still is now with us 
long yeah. 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 So 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 we can we can tell over here that there is a career avenue through an internship with sports as we have proven over here. Um now uh before we move on to another segment, uh Idan and Abdullah, where was it give us give us your moments, both your moments where you decided coaching is going to be the next thing you wanted to do once you guys graduated? Uh what was that moment? Uh, actually, not after my graduation. I think after my playing career with uh, with my team, my old team, which is uh, because that time I'm involved with Axis Auto, which is Shazwan and Azizi. Mm. Uh, they contact me uh, to play for them, and starting from there, I'm become interested again uh, with the football coaching. From that mm. moment, I'm starting to work uh, for the Little League again and continue my week, uh, continue my works until now. So uh, that's it for me. Ah, so yeah. Idan, Idan and I came in at the same time, that means, uh, in 2018. Uh, but yeah. obviously, I took a different pathway. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Abdullah, yeah. where was that moment? Oh, when was that moment? When the moment is six months before my SPM. I said to myself, I want to be a football coach. Uh, to wow. be honest, my dream is to coach Malaysia and to bring the World Cup here. But hopefully, <sighs> getting there slowly and slowly, take step by steps. Fingers crossed. Uh, fingers obviously, crossed. yeah, fingers crossed. That's that's a very big dream to go to. But hey, anything is possible, right? Yep. Now, uh, we move on to Abdullah at Idan's time at uh, Little League and also FCKL. Now, before we continue on, um, let us both both of you guys let us know how long you guys have been with uh, Little League and FCKL. You guys come in the same time or different? I think two years plus, including okay. internship. Okay. Yeah. Idan, uh, Abdullah. Um, I was here before, uh, two thousand fifteen. Yes, and then I got a job, and then come back. I uh, let's say three years. Three years, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, over the last few years that you have been with us, uh, what were the major changes that you have seen, and how has that impacted both of your coaching styles? Idan first. A major change that I see uh, start from internship, which is uh, the way of coaching. Hmm. All right. Okay. Right now, uh, recently, uh, starting this year, which is uh, Coach Gas, our old coach, uh, start to implement a philosophy. That's the difference between the during the back of the days. That's uh, just different what I see. Uh, for my coaching style, which is. Uh, I'm trying to encourage the players, uh, which is uh, try to ask the player what you can do better, how to improve that thing. If they don't know what to do, and then I'm going to show them the way how to do it. Uh, then it's up to them, their decision, whether you want to follow or you want to make another decision. Uh, just try to encourage the players how to do it better. Mm. Uh, that's my way of coaching your style. Okay. Uh, Abdullah, what were the major changes and how it, how, what was the impact? Uh. It's okay when I was back here last 2006 2017. Um, to be honest, the structure is not that good enough. But now, when I came back, the structure is where it's getting better and better. And we get to have new technical director, uh, we have guys, we have a lot of more coaches that is more qualified during before back, back days before, but. It was it was a surprise for me. A lot of new coaches, a lot of how the philosophy of the club is going there. And for me, for for my coaching style, it's just like what Coach Cass is telling me, asking a lot of questions to the boys more often now. That I I give them all the answers because if I give them all the answers, then they do they will not do their own. They will not have their creativity to make their decision because I'm not playing. They are playing, so mm. they have to make their their own decision. Mm-hmm. That's all for me. Andy, um, what have you last like over over the three years that they've been here? What are, what are the major changes that you've seen in them, and how ha- how has that impacted the way you see them in terms of their coaching styles as well? Well, first of, all, I think, first of all, I think it's pretty cool that um, you know we're talking to to Idan and Abdullah today. I think it's it's nice to to speak to people that started with us from a very young age and um, very inexperienced and and really no other experience of another work environment as well. And they have um, 
seen how the company has changed over the last two years, I'm sure, um, and how it continues to, to evolve and develop. Um, I feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're celebrating 20 years of being in business this year, but I feel like the club is really only two years old. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, there's been a lot of changes put into place and we've started to gather a lot of momentum. Um, and I'm very dedicated right now to, to growing the club and bringing in um, new personnel who are going to push it on to the next level. Um, surrounding young coaches like Idan and Abdullah with more experienced coaches who have got good qualifications, can teach lessons um, and help to develop the next generation of coach as well. Um, Idan and Abdullah, they've changed a lot since they've come in. You know, they've, they've um, come in as interns and now the, the two of them are, are being put in charge of our FCKL teams. Um, you know, Idan's got the responsibility for one of the first, uh, one of the first teams as well. Um, and Abdullah will be working his way towards that. So their their coaching uh, ability is, has has been shown very clearly to us, and seen how well they have been developing. Um, but they are still very young coaches. You know, they are by no means. I mean, no coach is ever the finished product. Everyone's mm. always learning. But these guys have got a lot to learn. And being young, you're like a sponge. So the more people we can surround them with that are going to give them good information, the better. And I think that these two have shown uh, the ability to be able to soak up that knowledge and, and use it um, and apply it to their coaching styles. And that's what coaching is all about. Someone said to me a couple of weeks ago that being a good coach is like being a good thief. Um, you know, you, you see, you see good ideas from people, or you you pick them off and you implement them for yourself. And yeah. uh, I, I really resonate with that as well because you know a lot of a lot of young coaches will make the mistake of trying to like forge themselves out to be different and try to set their their marker in the sand and say this is who I am. When in reality, you have no idea uh, what coaching is about yet. You know, you have to take mm -hmm. time to learn it, and there's just no substitute for that experience. So. I find that those young coaches who who take like good sessions or good drills that they see more experienced coaches run, exactly steal it and redeploy it, they they become much better because they they build a <coughs> solid foundation. And once that foundation is solid, then you can start adding on the little extra pieces of your own personal flair and um, and style. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, it's, it's very interesting you brought that up as well. Being a good coach is being a good thief because you also have to be a smart thief. Uh, that that's how I see it. Um, when you when you when you do take inspiration or when you took preference from other coaches, uh, it's not just blind copying. It should always be taking it, learning it, and also understanding why the drill is meant to be set that way, and that makes the drill much more effective when you put in your own design and flair. Would be what I would add on to what Andy had said. Now that being said, as well, who do you guys steal your ideas from uh, in Little League and FCK? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in, in everyone, <laughs> everyone, 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 all of them. Pieces, <laughs> now, um, pieces. However, uh, if there was anyone you guys look up to in Little League and FC Kuala Lumpur, who would it be and why? <laughs> uh, for me, everyone, because uh, I'm observing uh, what the drills they do and how they do it. Uh, if uh, because uh, like you said just now Henry uh, and Andy said uh, good coach is a good thief alright uh, I will copy it but at the same time I will ask the coaches okay why why you need to do this okay how you're gonna progress it if uh, the boys cannot do it how you're gonna regress it alright I'm gonna ask uh, the coaches first how to do it alright if the drill is suitable for my team I'm gonna take it observe it and then apply to my training uh, that's the way i'm coaching at the moment right yeah. abdullah um it will be i'm seeing it from everyone also looking at it looking at it and try try it for it for myself sometimes it doesn't work that's why sometimes work but try it first because for me experience if you experience it then you know oh my boss doesn't 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 need this my boss doesn't doesn't know how to do this, so how do I apply it for my boss? How do I change it a bit? Try it myself first. There's, That's a, how I, I th th there's some interesting things on this as well because sometimes you'll 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 copy a drill 
that coach that you've seen a coach deliver very successfully and it will yep. absolutely fail when you try to deliver it for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. 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 And what you realize after a little bit of time is is instead of watching what the drill is, you watch how the coach delivers it. How does he present it to the players? How does he explain it? How does he demonstrate it? That is often more important than what the actual drill is, especially for yeah. younger and less experienced players. It's more about how you deliver the drill. And, and that's that's what I encourage younger coaches to watch. It's not necessarily what the drill is per se, um, but how the coach uh, gets it gets the message across and gets the gets the group active. Um, but also, I think like uh, being a th- thief as a coach is not necessarily looking up to somebody and taking somebody's ideas that you look up to and respect is about all of uh, all of the group of coaches and the team of coaches that you're working with um, Edan coaches my son on a on a Saturday morning most weekends and he delivered a, a drill a few weeks ago which I thought was great and I, I stole that for my under four session the next day <laughs> slightly modified to make it a little bit easier but you know I'm I'm a far more experienced coach than Idan is, but it doesn't mean that I can't learn something. And, uh, you know, I took that idea and it's like, oh, it, it sparked something off. Okay, that's a good idea. Let's bring it over to my session tomorrow. And it and it actually spurned like uh, a, a three or four week process of like developing that session with that group of players. So that one drill that I'd seen Idan do actually gave me like four weeks worth of lesson plans for this one particular session. So stuff like that, wow. like, you know, again we always talk about it on this podcast a lot like coaching is a never-ending process you're always trying to educate yeah. yourself you're yeah. always trying to learn and if you're a good coach you look at every coach that's around you whether they're more experienced less experienced younger older it doesn't matter you can always learn something from somebody so mm-hmm. you know it's, it's good for these guys to not have one person that they're looking up to and, and and taking drills from and taking advice from because you have to be your own coach you have to pick from here pick from there and, and the more the more different kind of perspectives you can see coaching from the better mm-hmm. so um before I move on to the next question as well, Idan, <coughs> coaching um, Andy's son, Damien, is there any pressure with Andy <laughs> standing on the sidelines? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Our boss on the side, we need to perform well. <laughs> well, he's taken, he's taken one, one session of yours and made it into four weeks worth of, uh, worth of a trading plan for the under force. So I think you're doing quite an okay job so far. Uh, that being said... Um, you guys have been here for a while as well. Um, give us your favorite moments uh, on your time here, so far. Uh, I think my biggest moment is last year with the EDPU8, uh, which is we managed to get third place uh, for the Asia Junior League, which is 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 a good achievement uh, for the team, uh, which is. Uh, a new team uh, involving a seven years old players that managed to get third place and then uh, one more favorite moment is uh, not a local tournament which is a Vietnam tournament hmm. same thing uh, in the plate cup we got second place uh, which is a great achievement uh, in the local and the outside tournament it's a great moment for me as a coaches hmm. Abdullah? I got only one it was I got only one that was last season uh, Asia Junior League that I won with my team so basically all, most of my boys is from Little League so it good, it's good for them for winning that uh, division even though it's Division 3 but it, it, it was their first time entering there um, it, it was a great, great moment for me and for my boys also hmm. Okay now we move on to the Part of the episode uh, where we discuss a pressing issue, an interesting piece with our panelists. Um, today, we want to know more about internships as a gateway to coaching football. Now, I come from a background where internship made made sense, right? Uh, as a sort of transition to a career, uh, in terms of being a uh, desk job. Everybody wants to go to an internship and do a desk job. That's that's how I see in, an internship, and that's how I came to be, right? I use the internship to gain some experience on what I got, and then I come do what I do which is being a content executive um, do you guys it's, it's, it's probably quite different for you guys because you are on the field a lot as well um, how would you guys describe the transition and at the end why don't Andy give your take on this as well so you guys 
Uh, oh, sorry. I was just, I was just laughing and amusing at my uh, at yourself giving your <laughs> yourself the title of content executive. I've never heard of that before. No, no. It's, 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 it's that's probably like the content executive. Well, well, that was my that was my title in my previous job as have well. Have you got so some business cards executive. that you made up for yourself as well? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, <laughs> it's not printed yet. It's probably still in my computer. <laughs> Anyways, um. Uh, Idan Abdullah, uh, what are your takes on this transition? Um, okay, I'm going for Zidane. So in my in my, I'm thinking about this transition because most jobs is most more on desk job, right? So as coaches, we're going out feel more, and we are doing something different every day. We are looking. We are not doing the same thing, same job every day. We are. Sometimes kids um, can be, um, can how can you say it? They can be grumpy, sometimes not, sometimes listen, sometimes not. So every time is different thing. So transition from internship, from, uh, from a desk job to a field job, that's different for me. Mm. Because you're doing something different every day. What about you, Idan? Uh, in terms of being an intern and also a coach, and then you transition into a full-time coach, how was that experience like? Yeah, I'm agree with Abdullah, uh, which is yep. Uh, we need to deal uh, with a lot of people, especially outfield. All right, we need to communicate with all the coaches, uh, the parents, and we need to deal with the kids, how to control them, uh, and then sometimes yeah, uh, the parents come to us how we gonna deal with them. All right. Mm. And mm. then plus the from the internship, uh, which is the transition from internship uh, to the to the football full coaches time. Uh, mm. full time now. Yes, very smooth for me because uh, it's related uh, to what I'm doing at the moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. um, now, uh, was it very like for for you guys? Was it very like okay, that's it? I'm coming here to 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 coach or. Uh, in Little League or was it like I need to think about it a little bit more maybe there are other academies outside that I can go to when you when you finish your internship what what was it like what was your thought process like before choosing Little League upon graduation I don't think there was any thought involved but I think these guys just like I said before they just put out their, their CV to uh, <laughs> to whoever they thought might take them no but seriously because I, I, I don't I don't think I don't believe that um, that most of these guys that send out their internships to us believe that it's going to end up being their job in, in two, three years' time. They're just doing it because they have to do an internship as part of their their course, and that satisfies the criteria of it. And then they, you know, they don't anticipate it to actually lead on to a job. And mm. I think that that's probably the difference that you see in terms of. Um, like sports science internships versus the kind of internship that you you experienced Henry where you go into Mm -hmm. an office like I'd say most internships where if you get a place in an office at a desk job they tend to lead into a job offer afterwards I think in sports science that's probably not the case Um, Mm. so I don't think that these guys kind of plan that that pathway out I think they happen to get an internship with us and whilst they were doing the internship they saw oh wow actually people are employed doing this job and, and maybe they fall into it then. I reckon that's what happened anyway. Mm, mm. Uh, is that is that true, guys? Mm, I would say yes. You done? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Okay, for those who are going to be listening to the audio version of the podcast, Idan just put the just close his mouth. He's not going to say anything. Um, uh, now going back, going going back to that, Andy. Um, in terms of so we we know the top process of uh, both Idan and Abdullah in terms of getting their their, their career their career path kind of set already. Now for you, uh, Andy, as a um, as a business owner, as a s- academy owner, um, and a coach, uh, what is it about interns that just go, okay, you know what these guys have a future here. I will employ them. What what is your thought process like in terms of getting the interns to go to a full time job it, uh, over at Little League? Um, people that show a willingness to learn, um, you know, like I said, uh, uh, mentioned earlier before, like coaches, young coaches need to be like sponges. Um, you do see um, people 
interns come in who think that they they already know it, uh, especially if they are good football players. Um, that that tends to make it a little bit harder for them to to uh, soak up what you're what you're telling them and and willing to learn. Also interns that come in and and realize quite early on oh actually if i put my head down and work quite hard in this internship there could actually be a job offer out of it like i said i think the majority of interns come in without any expectations that they're going to get a job out of this afterwards and it's quite cool that we're doing this podcast because i hope that 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 mindset changes from now on um, and that people that are applying for internships see it as potentially a uh, see us as a potential employer in the future because there's, I mean, there's no better place to go and get young coaches from, like young guys that are or girls that are hungry, coming out of of university and college, um, have done a sports science degree. Um, forget what I said about that earlier, but you know, it's a good sign that they're interested in sports at least. Um, you know, and if they show signs in that they want to coach and they know a bit about what they're talking about and they're willing to listen to to coaches and then they have an ability to absorb the information because not everybody does if they have an ability to absorb it and then communicate it well to um, uh, to the kids that they're coaching then there's always a, a possibility of looking at, at uh, as that at that person as a candidate for a job um, I would say though above all else if there's one uh, kind of characteristic that's, that's needed um, is good communication um, mm-hmm. because often as a coach uh, you might know um, what you're trying to teach teach the kids but if you can't communicate it properly then you're going to get nowhere and mm-hmm. c- like learning how to communicate properly with kids is very difficult if it doesn't come naturally to you so you know you've got to look for somebody that that is a has an, a, an instant bond with the kids that they're coaching um, and can grab their attention if they don't get that it's kind of hard to teach that right Right. Now, for those who are listening to us and are currently interns as well, uh, again, it's it's an interesting um, take because uh, I I personally feel that when I did my internship, I come in with a lot of expectations thinking that, right, when I go into an internship, I need to get this job. I need to get a placement in this company. Uh, with, with this philosophy or with this style of let's looking at it as well, um, it's something to consider because when you go in with no expectations, you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, just like the great Forrest Gump had said, uh, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get, right? Um, yep. Now, uh, speaking of that as well, uh, Idan and Abdullah, were there any lessons that you guys have learned not during your coaching time, but during your internship period that you guys apply now? Want to go first? Oh, I want to go first. It's <laughs> it's how I communicate with kids. Um, I learn a lot. From because I'm when I was internship I was doing a lot with under six, and seeing the senior coach who was there, um, how they communicate with kids, how they translate what they want them to do, is how what I learned from there. So that's why how I apply it from here, uh, from my internship to my work, with my work now my full time job is so how I communicate with them. Mm, it's communication for you yeah. Idan? Yeah, uh, for me it's a self-confidence uh, That's a lesson I learned uh, Which is because All the players are going to look up into you If you mm. don't have any self-confidence on yourself How are they going to improve? If you mm. always look down The players also going to be like that Because you are the example to the, all the players all right? And then uh, The drills all right? You need have to have confidence All the drills you have to do uh, All the drills you did if you think that this uh, is not good enough, make sure you have a contingency plan uh, for that drills. Mm. Uh, uh, speaking of that as well, uh, in terms of self-confidence, I can vouch for Idan because I've seen him from being extremely camera shy two years ago to being okay to be in front of the podcast today. So, so this is a big he's step. In the gym, step. he's got more self-confidence <laughs> than his uh, physique. I have to, I we had have a. To. <laughs> we we had a meeting once as well, and Idan was having that meeting in the gym, and that's how com- that's how that's how consistent he is in terms of his own regimen as well. You do need <laughs> to get Abdullah along with you, Idan. <laughs> oh no, thanks. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <I> hate gym. <laughs> um, now, uh, for the upcoming football coaches, would you guys recommend this pathway, career pathway for them, which is a transition from internship to a football coaching career for you two? 
uh, for me yes if uh, they see a uh, football coaching as their career why not go on go for it uh, you don't know what future lies in front of you but if you don't try it uh, we don't know what might happen mm. all right if it's your career then go for it all right if you think that football coaching is not suits uh, not suitable with you then it's okay we try again try again or you can go to another choice that you have mm. yeah uh, that's for me agree Abdullah? with you on that try mm. it first you never know mm-hmm Uh, Alright um, Now We go on to My favorite segment uh, Oh Before that actually Before I go on to My favorite segment Andy um, Any Any advice For the uh, Upcoming football coaches And the career pathway That Idan and Abdullah Have chosen Well I, I do think It's a good pathway Because I think um, As we've spoken about Before again On this podcast Finding a mentor um, When you're learning How to coach Is, is very important Um, and if you join an organization such as ours, you've got 15, 16 other coaches that you could potentially learn from and, and build a bond with. Like whilst I said, it's important not to look up to one coach and take all ideas from that person. You want to build that that kind of round uh, um, uh, the round kind of base. Uh, it's also really good if you can find one coach that you really resonate with, who's very experienced, and you can you know go for coffee with them and ask questions and 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 kind of pick their brains a little bit if you can find one person like that in an organization it's great um i also think it's it's a pretty good opportunity to find out very early on in your life whether you can be passionate about football coaching for a long period of time because it's one of those professions which you need to spend a lot of years in to become really really good at so if you go in as a young intern at 21 22 years old If you get 10 years of experience under your belt, now you're 32, 33, uh, and you're, you're well into it. Whereas if you try your hand at a few other things, come into coaching a little bit later on in life, uh, maybe you start off when you're 30, by the time you've got that solid 10 years of experience under your belt, you're, you're 40, and then it starts to become more difficult to create um, a, a career path out of it. So always good to get started early on. Um, I think you'll. I think people know very, very quickly whether coaching is for them or not. Um, I think that's something you you figure out pretty early on into it. Uh, you'll know whether you can do this for the next ten, fifteen years of your life. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great way to to get into it. Hmm. Uh, for those avid listeners out there, avid upcoming football coaches, remember that you always have different pathways to go to, and this is just one of them. Uh, give it a shot. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, uh, that DM being said, now if you're interested. yeah, you can DM <laughs> me if you're interested. I will, I will, I will try and hook you up with a content executive job as well if you're not interested <laughs> in the <laughs> in the football coaching scene. Wouldn't that put you out of a job then? If you found, uh, I, guess so. I, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> um, uh, before before I get fired from this podcast, uh, let's move <laughs> to my favorite. <laughs> let's move on to my favorite segment of the show. Uh, Which is also about uncertainty, which is called Ask Soccer 60, where we bring in questions from the coaches and also you, the listeners, from our social media platform, which is at Little League Soccer MY on both Facebook and Instagram. And we take in your questions and we uh, we ask them to Andy and our guests. Today is for Abdullah and Idan. They have no idea what it's going to be, so let's get cracking with it. Now, the first question is going to be from Simon Motika. One of our oh, coaches and one of our our, oh. our favorite our favorite um, student <laughs> in this uh, in this podcast. Uh, Simon asks, "What's the biggest reason that has inspired you both to become a coach?" Uh, my family. My <coughs> family is my backbone uh, because after I finishing my football career, and then I ask. Uh, advice from them which is uh, why not you try uh, football coaching because before this you have an internship done uh, with the football academy before why don't give it a try so that's give me inspiration uh, the advice that I get from them and then so now here I am uh, mm. with the Little League Academy I think as well I'll just jump on that before Abdullah mm-hmm. answers I think um, Idan had another fork in the in the road at the end of last year had mm. the opportunity to go back and, and potentially uh, go and play professional football again or continue down the path with us. 
um, he decided to, to stick with us. I think he made a, a good decision at the time. Um, it's, it's something that can be now a long career for him, uh, give him some stability. Uh, so I'm very pleased that he chose that, that path and I look forward to repaying that decision that he made and, and help him develop his career for the future. Oh. Abdullah? Uh, uh, we will be same as my as Idan. It's my family also because looking at my brothers and sisters, they're doing all day is their job. So I want to be something different. I don't want to be just like them. Everything with the same thing every day. So now I'm doing now what I got what I got what I want is doing something different every day. All right. Uh, next question comes from Shazwan Bong. Two questions for you, Idan. First question. Uh, hey, don't don't look. Yeah, two questions. Uh, number one, is it true that you have multiple girlfriends? Wow. Uh, <laughs> and number two, okay, let's answer that one first. <laughs> is it true that you have multiple girlfriends, Idan? No. <laughs> I'm single and available. Ah, okay, there we go. For uh, those people my who numbers, my number is on the screen. Zero one seven six four eight. Swipe up, please. <laughs> uh, oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> Next question. Hold on, we need to ask the same question to Abdullah. Uh, Abdullah, do you have about four girlfriends? Uh, no, I don't have. But I'm now I'm still knowing someone now right now. What is your name? No Farhana. Oh. oh. Okay, okay, okay. Shout, shout, shout out, shout out to No Farhana. Uh, <laughs> your significant other is uh, in this podcast with us. So listen, <laughs> listen, listen all the way to the end. Um, now, Ida, next question um, from Shazwan. How difficult is it to coach an elite and also an EDP team, as both teams have different needs? Uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm struggling a bit uh, with the EDP. As you know, there's, uh, they are the development program teams, right? So the expectation uh, for them to become like elites, uh, it's, uh, there's a still a small gap uh, for them uh, to become like an elite team. Uh, so for me, uh, the difficulty is there, uh, which is I need to focus a lot on technique, technique, and technique uh, to Im- improve them on the technique first uh, before I go to some more advanced uh, training drills. Uh, that's the difficulties I have at the moment. Mm. So it's more uh, of the technical, the technical uh, yeah. side of it. Um, and also, uh, I'm very sure. I'm going to mm. jump in to support you down here. I hope I don't get too much flack from any <laughs> EDP parents that are, are watching or listening to this. But you know the the task of a of a coach with one of our development teams is obviously to try and uh, train them to to get promoted to the first team. That's obviously the goal. Um, but it's not always possible. You know, uh, it's not always possible that, that that kids can be promoted from the development team to the first team. Firstly, that depends on how well the first team is performing, how good the players are there. Um, it it has. It doesn't necessarily have any reflection on the level of coaching that those uh, players are getting. Um, not everybody can be in the first team. Um, some yep. some kids just uh, will never naturally be good enough to be in the first team. Um, other players, uh, it, and, and it doesn't matter how hard they work, you know. And then uh, conversely, you look at the first team. There could be players in there that potentially are look like they don't work as hard. Uh, they're not as committed to training but they might just be naturally gifted better football players and and there's there's a limit to what we can do as coaches we're not magicians you can't uh, train them harder and they're going to be in the first team so it, there has to be some realistic expectations and whilst it's always the goal of the development coach to promote players into the first team squad we have to be realistic as well about where where kids should be placed and there's no point pushing a kid into a first team if if he can't cope there so you know we have to be realistic and understand that it's not going to be it's not going to be possible to promote everybody and uh, you know you can't, can't always blame the coach for that of course sometimes the coach may may, may make mistakes um, but it's not it's, it's generally not going to be the coach's fault you know it's generally going to come down to to players ability and, and also how hard they work as well of course yeah mm, of course of course uh, we move on to the next question now uh, from uh, Chris Nathan um, 
this is first one is for Abdullah, and um, I'm I, I'm very sure he insists on me asking you this. But um, <laughs> how did you lose your tooth, and when are you planning to fix it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. G- <laughs> I was ready for that question from Chris if you say if he was from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so the first question is when, right? So, I lost it in 2012. Hmm. But to say when I'm going to fix it, um, Eden doesn't have a girlfriend right now. I have a girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> so, I don't need to fix my teeth then. You flex <laughs> now, huh? you, that's your biggest flex to me. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Okay, okay, well okay. done. Well done, very well done. Oh my gosh! Um, please, girls, women out there, attention, please. Hey, hey. Uh, only no for Hannah. We said about being being a coach must have self confidence. Abdullah's just displayed uh, just um, displayed it there. Perfect. Hundred percent perfect explanation of self confidence. That is that is Coach Abdullah for you guys. Um, next question is also for um, Coach Abdullah, but also from Chris. Um, what areas are you planning to work with with your players more this season? Now, knowing that you <coughs> hold two elite development squads, uh, which area? So right now, um, for this season, last this season, I'm working for my first team. Uh, for my first team, the, the Division Two team, I'm working on their uh, technical abilities and also their shooting a lot. Um, because we we've, we've been working on our passing last season, and for the second team is more on technical part because most of the players in Division Three is on most of them from Little League, so need them more more on their technical bit part. That's right. what we're focusing on. Mm-hmm. Um, next question then uh, to. Also from Chris But this one is to uh, Idan So Idan you have a chance To redeem yourself now (laughs) Uh, Idan what's your playing philosophy As a coach And how do you aim To achieve that With your players And I'm assuming Both your teams Uh, uh, My philosophy is uh, Trying to play A passing football Which is a possession Mm. So Now I'm trying to work uh, That thing Uh, Every Past these three weeks I work on that thing so with my boot team under A and uh, EDP U9 so they show me a good improvement especially mm. uh, passing football they play nicely uh, they play a great football uh, but now at the moment my problem is uh, finishing touches mm. uh, that's that's the only problem but most important thing is I'm happy what they try to apply and implement uh, in the especially in the real match what we have been done in the training, they apply in the real match. Uh, mm. That's what I want to see from my players. If we got the result, there's a bonus for them. What I want trying to see is how they perform, how they develop, uh, what we have been trying to train before. That's what I want to see from them. Mm. Uh, and, and for me as well, uh, from my side, in terms of being an uh, outside observer, um, with you putting in that passing philosophy, it's really interesting to see you applying it to a young age group where... You know, their, fo- may- their main focus, if it's not taught properly, is to just run towards the ball and maybe two or three of them just chase the same ball instead of, you know, finding the space to be at the right spot to pass the ball in and then create a chance from there. So that's very interesting to see from me. And, and, and I can tell that there's a huge improvement over there as well for players of your age group. Um, now, last question from the coaches would be from Kurt Hurt. Uh, Ida, this question goes to you. Uh, Kurt asks... Do you look up to Adama Traore? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's just for my... <coughs> what? Uh, have a bucket list uh, before 30. I want try, try to get my body done before 30. That's one, one of my bucket lists. Ah, yeah, okay. That's what I try to achieve at the moment. Yeah, so if you do look up to Adama Traore, uh, you cannot do, you cannot lift weights. It's just a lot of baby oil, and I don't know what he does to to look so muscular. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, did you do you want to say something from there just now? Yeah, uh, before uh, Idan turns thirty, I'm gonna uh, sponsor him to enter a bodybuilding competition. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, I want to see it. I don't want to uh, see the pictures. I just, want to hold on to the pi- I just want to hold on to those pictures to use against you for the rest of your life. <laughs> him all bronze and oiled up. <laughs> yeah. Baby um, oil. <laughs> Now, um, for, for, for both of you guys, and probably Andy as well, can put your input. Uh, Kurt asks, uh, do you guys believe as coaches of young players that young players should be taught to work from both feet at a young age or focus on their strong foot? Uh, for me, both feet. Mm-hmm. Both, both feet. feet. Both feet. Uh, for, me, st- <coughs> for me, um, for me, it's... Try to use, try to learn, try use the stronger foot first. First, first, sorry, try use the stronger feet first, mm. and then in long way, try to use your weak foot. Okay, so Idan, you have you before I cut you off there. You had something. You had an explanation. What was the explanation uh, for your both feet? Uh, because I have uh one parents uh, which is uh coach has one team a uh, guy, I talked to his dad uh. Because he can shoot the ball with left and right foot, mm. so I talked to his dad. Uh, what he's doing uh, during his young age? So his dad uh, told me that uh, during his time uh, at the Japanese academy uh, at Japan, uh, his coaches implement to train with boots using both feet, right foot, mm. left foot, right foot, left foot. Uh, that's why until now, Akai uh, can shoot with a uh, proper right foot and left foot. Uh, good right. technique. Good technique. Yeah, and and Kai is only what nine, this uh, year. Nine this year. Yeah. Mm, mm, that's right. That's right. So it's good that we're we're putting it that way. Andy, what do you think? Uh yeah, I I think both feet for sure. Um, mm. it was something that that was never drilled into me when I was a kid, and I grew up very very one footed. Um, and it was only later on in life that I I learned the value of being able to use two feet, and it becomes much more difficult then. Um, to, to learn um, but I, I, I did kind of force myself to, to practice with my left foot more um, mm-hmm. and I think it makes a big difference if you do have that uh, as a weapon and if you've learned that from a, from a kid as a young age I think it's far far easier yeah. right um, okay now we go on to questions from Instagram I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to screen through these because there's a lot of questions that came in thank you so much guys for, for putting in your questions um, really appreciate it now um, it, this is for Coach Rashidan uh, and also for Coach um, they asked, he asked both questions in the same uh, two, two, two posts uh, for both Idan and Abdullah um, how old are you coaches <laughs> from Bo Rafik number 9 if you guys are comfortable with revealing your age, <laughs> twenty-seven. I'm All right. Tw- I'm twenty-nine. There you go. Now, um, Christian asks, "How to improve my decision taking? I tend to be afraid uh, to um, make those big decisions." Decision making. Mm-hmm. Uh, decision making because it's an ongoing process. Uh, what can I advise to that play is uh, be confident what you do. Just be confident, all right. I uh, don't need to worry because uh, the coaches, the coach is out there to help you, all right. If your decision is not good, maybe he gonna stop you, maybe don't, mm-hmm. all right. And then he gonna explain to you what you can do better. Abdullah, mm, try it first. You have to try it first. Then you you can experience it. There's so many ways to make to do in football. Mm-hmm. There's so many ways to achieve where you want to go. Try it first. Maybe you cannot go this way. That's another way you can do. All right. Um, now uh, I got a question for both of you guys as well. Um, by Nuhan, uh, Noh Anwa. All right. No Anwa asks, how do you guys increase player intelligence or Play. mental awareness? Or mental awareness. How do you guys? How how would you guys uh, increase that aspect of the player? Play intelligence, uh, based on my experience, uh, repetition, repetition, and repetition. <coughs> I let them doing a lot of the same thing, again and again, but uh, at the same time also. Uh, uh, 
especially at the schools at the mm-hmm. homes mm-hmm. Uh, so parents need to play a crucial role what 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 they do at home or at the schools so it's also affect their mental awareness so also uh, that's my opinion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i'm going to i'm going to agree with Vidan on that <laughs> um parents um because coaching with us f- for example for one hour is not enough to continue on that because parents also need the more because i learn from from my experience i was not as good player as idan but playing with my friends outside of training it makes me help help me a lot also because i know where which activity that i need to go making my own decision making my mental awareness help me also on that so if parents can do outside of training it will be great mm. Okay, Andy, how do we how do we work on this one? How do we increase player intelligence or mental awareness? Uh, I see you uh, value my opinion on this question after you skipped me from the last question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, actually, my answer is the same for for the previous question and this one. Actually, um, is about putting yourself into the most challenging positions you possibly can. So uh, if you're a kid, you have a great opportunity here to try and go and play uh, with some older kids. Um, or if you're in a development team, try to get some sparring games against against the elite teams. Um, the reason being is that when you put yourself in those really difficult situations, you're forced to make a lot of decisions. You're forced to be very smart, um, especially if you're playing uh, with older, older children. Um, you're forced to be a little bit more clever. You can't beat them with brute strength um, or, or speed. A lot of the time, you've got to be a little bit more switched on. Um, and I think the more you can put yourself in those uh, situations, uh, the more you're going to develop as a player. And you know that goes for even when you when you you know get to to my age. When if I play with groups of players that are much much better than me, uh, my performance will get better uh, over time. You know it's not immediate, and and when you first do it, it's very difficult because you're going to make mistakes and you're going to feel like you're the worst player on the pitch, uh, and that's tough and that's tough to to accept. But you also have to go into it with uh, knowing why you're doing it that it's going to be a, an outcome come for the future. Everybody on the pitch makes mistakes, and you just have to be comfortable with making those mistakes and and learning from it. Um, and if you put yourself in those difficult situations, you will have uh, tough times, but it will make you better in the long run. And and if you look at it as mm-hmm. a long term development, then it's going to be much better for you. Mm. Okay. Uh, last question from Papi Mateo twelve. Um, for everyone, then, um, what do you guys look for in a player? Uh, maybe Idan and Abdullah first. Uh, self confidence. <coughs> yeah, self confidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, self. Uh, because if the players have a self confidence, uh, he can do anything. Uh, what the coaches uh tell them to do, <coughs> even mm-hmm. though it's a mistake, even though they are still making a mistake, same same mistake, but if they keep on trying, keep on trying. Uh, maybe they will become better. Mm. Uh, Self confidence. Uh, I try to look up first. Okay, uh, Abdullah, what do you look for in a player? Oh, I'm looking. To be honest, it's um looking at their technical ability, but not so much on te- their technical ability. I'm gonna agree with agree with Idan again on this mm. self confidence. <laughs> uh, because if if they show they were, they were really wanted it. They will show their confidence on it. Mm. So, if they really, it doesn't matter because if you have that fighting spirit, you have that. I will take you on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy, what do you well, look I'll, for? I'll, in I'll, change the, I'll change the question slightly so they don't give exactly the same answer. And <laughs> okay, uh, okay. I'll talk about um, what I look for in a coach uh, because mm-hmm. I think it's similar kind of attributes. So I do think it's applicable. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I'm looking for right now uh, is good team players. Uh, trying to build a team of coaches who are going to work together, um, communicate well, feed off of each other and make the collective product better. I think that exact same thing can be applied to players as well. Um, you don't want players in your team who are, are not willing to work with other players and maybe they think they're the best player and, and therefore they won't, won't uh, help out their teammates. Um, 
and then go back to what I said earlier about good communication. Um, and this comes as, as communicating within a team, um, also giving clear instructions. Uh, so from a coach, you've got to give clear instructions to your players that are on the pitch. But if we translate that to a player as well, you need to be giving good communication to your teammates so that you're, um, you're understanding what's going on on the pitch uh, and making sure that everybody is doing their job. So those are the two things that, that I'm really looking for. All right, um, that really ties everything up and that brings us to the end of our podcast episode 12 of Soccer 60 today. Now, thank you so much, Abdullah and Idan, for joining us today and I wish you all the best in your constantly growing journey. Okay, uh, now, <laughs> give us feedback, send us some questions. We'd love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting platforms and don't forget to rate us, rate us five stars if you enjoy what you're listening to and if you don't enjoy what you're listening to, let us know. Uh, or in your comment section. <laughs> uh, most importantly, most importantly, don't forget to follow us, Little League Soccer Malaysia, on our social media platforms, which is at Little League Soccer MY on both Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, this is Soccer Sixty. See you guys in the next episode.